Okay, hello and welcome to the next episode of uh, Let's Talk Brand. Uh, this is the first in Poland series of interviews with uh, world-class branding um, experts. And um, today I'm super, super excited to interview, final interview, uh, Jerome uh, Joseph. Um, and now I'm going to use my notes, the CEO of the Brand Theatre Worldwide based in Singapore an award-winning brand customer experience strategist and a global speaker focused on brand strategy, brand engagement, internal branding, personal branding, um, and branded customer experience. Uh, he's also acknowledged as a global brand guru on the top 30 global guru gurus list, uh, and is ranked number two in the world. Uh, he is also best-selling author of eight books on branding, uh, has consulted with over 1,000 brands and has spoken in uh, 40, 34 uh, countries and hopefully one day you would also speak, you will also speak in Poland. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it and that's one of the reasons I'm doing this. I want to introduce a uh, global experts to the Polish uh, entrepreneurs, marketers and students to finally invite you to uh, our country to share your knowledge here. Uh, so welcome to the podcast and uh, actually welcome to Poland, uh, Jerome. I'm excited to, to represent right my country of Singapore. I've not been to Poland. My, my wife actually was born next door to, to Poland. Really? Belarus. Oh. Yeah. So my wife was born in Belarus and my and my brother-in-law has got Polish as um, his 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 family was from Poland. So he's he's got Polish blood in him. <laughs> so that's my connection, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so quite quite close, but now now the world is quite small. We can meet online and and, and discuss. Exactly. Um, yes. um, and today, I would like to talk with you about um, internal uh, branding. And I, I, I like, yes. The exactly. topic, right? <laughs> 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 and I like to start with basics. Um, so, if you can explain, uh, and basic and some definitions, and if you can explain what is internal, internal branding and why is it so important. Wow. <laughs> you know, I, I, I could read my entire book and I still won't finish. <laughs> you do not have enough time. <laughs> I'm going to try to simplify it for you, right? When you have an organization, I call that organization a brand. The employees become part of that brand. So internal branding is about directing your efforts internally in your organization to strengthen the culture of your organization, to get your people on board the brand. And this is crucial because many organizations have, have multiple cultures, but in, in my book and in my thought leadership, it has to be driven by your brand. That's what's going to differentiate you in the marketplace. That's what's going to get your people moving towards the same direction. That's where your organization's strategic goals are going to head towards. And that is internal branding. Okay, quite quite simple. But okay, let's make it uh, even more clear or, or simple. Um, uh, where are or what are the touch points um, between internal and uh, external uh, branding? I know that people um, get lost in all these uh, concepts and definitions. Sure. Brand branding, external branding, internal branding, employer That's branding, amazing. marketing culture, uh, customer experience. Lots of that. Um, um, in my opinion, um, branding is always about uh, about the same thing. Of course, the subject changes. Um, yeah. But maybe if you can just make it more clear, what are so, the touch points and what look, are the differences? It, and why? It's a simple kind of thing, right? Think of an iceberg. I mean, it's a little bit cliche and it's a bit overdone. But if you think about an iceberg, what right. people see above the iceberg is your, is your brand collaterals. It's... It's your website, it's, you know, those kind of touch points, right? So that's what people see. Mm -hmm. Internal branding is what people don't see. It is your people. It's, the, it's, it's your beliefs. 
it's it's what you represent and all that is what what the world doesn't really see i mean they see it they see it through through the actions through through, through the external branding but internal is always about being inside your organization so examples of touch points inside an organization would be for example your people your employees it would be the kind of training programs that you get your people on board your brand it would be heroes that represent your brand story it would be rituals symbols mm -hmm. so all these elements of what makes a brand really powerful is if they can get all this aligned to what they represent get everyone on board that's a sign of a truly world class in brand that's grown from within okay uh, but, but how, how can we engage uh, employees in a way that, that they become the ambassadors uh, for our brand? Uh, it is, uh, sorry, I, I, would, I would like to add something, but because it's, I think it's quite simple when we have a very small company where everyone has a contact with each other. Uh, but the situation is completely different when we uh, think about a very large or a global company when we have hundreds or even thousands of uh, people. And uh, what tools should be used? Um, should we use uh, to deliver the message and uh, and verify if employees uh, are already or still are on brand? Sure. So, so Lucas, there, there, are, there are there are there are many many ways. In fact, in in my book, in what I've written, I've I wrote on an entire approach to how to do this in your organization. But let me give you a, a simple, some simple tips, um, you know, for your viewers and yeah. on how to think about your brand from within. And I will simplify it even more by, by bringing in the element of the four C's. So what's the four C's that need to happen in organization? Number one is clarity. It is very important that every single person in your organization knows about your brand. And I know you kind of mentioned, hey, in a small organization, it's, 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 it's a lot easier. Yes, it is. But I do a lot of work. In fact, my PhD is looking at small organizations and internal branding. And one of the things that I discovered is only the leader knows the brand inside out. Everyone else has has does not have the right clarity so individuals in organization or employees in organization interpret the brand differently so number one is clarity making sure everyone is on the same page okay number two is connection so it's one thing to know about your brand it's another thing to get people to believe in your brand so that's that's a tough part right because uh, you know when I go around and work with organizations and, and these organizations do a really good job in letting all the employees know about the brand, but when you speak to them, the employee goes, yeah, but I, yeah, okay. I, I, know, your, I know my values, but so what? So that connection, that belief piece is extremely crucial. And there is a whole variety of tools that I talk about in my book to help you, number one, of course, get people to know clarity, but more importantly, get them to believe in the brand. So connection is about creating belief. And you could do that in a few ways. So you could do that, for example, by having powerful stories that, that represent what the brand means. Steve Jobs does a really good job of that. I mean, you know, the kind of stories that Apple tell about Steve Jobs is a good example of employees who go, wow, I love the story of the hero. And they get inspired to work there and what it represents. So it could be stories, it could be training. So I spend a lot of time training organizations all around the world to get the employees to understand the brand, but to believe in it. So there are many techniques and tools that you can use to create, to create connection. Number three is consistency. Now, this is a huge problem with organizations that I go in. Because why? They launch their brand to the world. Woohoo, we have got great values. Yes, our purpose. We want to transform the world. And three months later, pssst, completely sizzles out. <laughs> so consistency means that if you put a message to the world, the world needs to see you doing this consistently 
every single time. And that's the third C. The fourth C is champion. Champion means how can you get people in your organization to advocate your brand, to tell other people about your brand, to influence inside the organization and outside the organization. For me, again, that's another big thing that's, that I don't see in organizations. You tend to see the leader being the champion, but you don't see employees doing that for the organization. Mm -hmm. well, my work ends at five o'clock. It's time for me to go home. See ya. World-class organizations have, have champions that walk the talk, that lead the way, that influence and act as a catalyst of change. So that's the four C's. Okay. And uh, you also wrote a book, um, uh, 10 Principles to Grow Your Internal Brand. And um, sure. so I guess there's more principles how to do this well and how to, how to, how to create this, uh, this beliefs uh, among It is. I mean, look, I mean, we, when we work with clients around the world, it's a full consulting project. You know, I go in, I spend sometimes a year. We, we just finished working with a client in Singapore. And this is a world-class resort. World-class resort. And a big part of the process is the framework that I talk about in my, my book. Number one, we had to, to do a lot of research by, by investigating what was going on in the organization to find out where they were at in terms of, number one, where was the brand and where they want to go. So that research is very important because that help you, helps you now find out where are the opportunities and what gaps do I need to close when I start thinking about internal branding. Number two, we then had to create the brand DNA of the organization. And that's a strategic piece. From, from the brand DNA, we then had to map out, and you kind of talked about it, the touch points, but map out how can I influence people in my organization to get on board in the brand. And in, in, you know, I use the four C's in this process, but I, there is the workshops that we run. There is the online learning that we put together. There is the, 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 the communication messages that we, we, we provide them. There is the stories that we curate. There's the symbols, there's the rituals. It's a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> so you get that right. If you get that right, I truly, and I promise you, right, your organization will be much better for it. Okay. Uh, now, now I think people may have some troubles to understand what's the difference between internal branding and employer branding. Sure. So you can explain this. So internal brand, in fact, when I run my master class, I cover both in my master class. And I kind of talk a little bit about my book. Employer branding is attracting the right people to join your organization that is driven by what your brand DNA is all about. So once you, you create that strategy of who you are and what you represent, you get your people on board the brand, then the next part of it would be, hey, we stand for passion or maybe we stand for integrity. I want to get and recruit or attract the right people to fit in our brand. So, of course, a big part of employee branding, you need, for example, if I need to hire someone in customer service, for example, I would need someone to have the skills in customer service. That's a given. But in the recruiting, and I call it recruit on brand, you now need to also have components where you can, you can assess this person based on the brand DNA of your organization. And that is employer branding. The ability to attract someone to your brand and to allow them and align them to, hey, if you join organization X, this is what you're going to get. So it's an attraction message. It's, 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 it's to pull people in, but it's also to help you choose the right fit of people. Okay, so now it's, now it's, now it's clear and it's, it's un un understandable. So thank you. Uh, thank you for this. And uh, you've said that... Uh, uh, that um, uh, internal branding is something that uh, the prospects don't do not see because it's internal, but they can exp experience it. Um, yeah. Um, and and um, um, I remember from your I, I'm not sure from your video or your keynote uh, the story about uh, 
the, the case of uh, the guitar and the United um, Airlines. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure if it was um, good lessons for them, as later there was another case with Dr. Dr. Dao. <laughs> yes. so, so maybe they didn't do their uh, homework, but uh, if you can, um, uh, some, may not, some may not know this story. So before answering if it was a good lesson or what was this lesson for them, uh, can you remind the audience what these stories were about? Sure. So the the story of United Airlines, I mean, there, there, you're right, there were two stories. And I mentioned both the stories and sometimes in my workshops. One story was about a gentleman who, because of an interaction he had with an employee of United Airlines, ended up having his guitar broken. He got so upset that he wrote a song about it that went viral. United, of course, did not really... Uh, respond to that to that song because they didn't see it as a huh, so what you write a song about me who cares but the song went viral and united in the end paid for the broken guitar after like a year-long saga so now how does this relate back to internal branding is very simple the reason why you invest in an internal branding program is to prevent incidents like this from happening internal branding helps you create a culture driven by your brand it gets your people on board to what you represent. If you get that right, then these people are able to translate the message to the audience in a way that resonates from your brand. Of course, in the United case, internal branding, when I run internal branding programs, sometimes there is a need to also supplement that with a program that I call branded customer experience. So you get people on board your brand, but you may need to teach them specific customer-facing skills that resonate from your brand, hence the program Branded Customer Experience. So the United story is an example of stories of, of multiple brands around the world whose people have proven to be destructive when it comes to the brand. Now, I'm going to ask your viewers a question, right? You guys have, have services that you all use, for example, the train, the plane, the bus, the shop that you go to, a restaurant. Now, most of the time when you ask people, if you go to the restaurant 10 times, and out of the 10 times, you had nine good experiences, chances are you won't really remember it or talk too much about it. You might go to your, to your friends and you might go, hey, that's a nice restaurant. But hey, out of the nine times, you have one time, a one bad experience guess what's going to happen it's going to stick like super glue people focus unfortunately i don't like that about human beings but we focus on what went wrong and guess what's going to happen they're going to be upset they're going to be miffed they're going to go on social media they're going to tell the world but what about the nine times that they had good experiences no 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 i want to focus on that one bad time <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and that is the reality that brands need to understand. That is why it is so crucial that every touch point where your employee is delivering an experience has to be whew, at this level. Consistency. We talk about consistency as one of the C's. That's it. You got to be consistent. You got to be playing at this level all the time. If you are uh, great Monday to Thursday, but on Friday, hey, I'm in a bad move. I fought with my wife. Boom. That's it. People are going to remember that. That's why, I mean, I, I have a tough challenge when I go into organize because with my brand consulting firm, Lucas, I do external branding and I do internal branding. And when I go in and when I talk to organizations, many organizations are very focused on the external part of branding, which is good because, you know, I'm happy to serve them. I'm happy for you to be successful. But then when I stop them and I go, hey, but what about the inside part? Oh, it's fine. Don't worry about it. And I go, you should be worried about it. <laughs> because if you put a message to the world and if your people cannot deliver that message, uh-oh, you are in trouble. <laughs> yes. Um, I, I know it from my, from my own experience. Um, um... Some time ago, before pandemic situation, I, I talked to the um, to some employees in the um, in the spa, 
Yeah. And uh, I ask them, why you do these messages? What do you want to change in this human life? And they did not know why they are doing this. Uh, most of them said, because we are earning money. We want to earn the money. That's why we are doing messages. <laughs> so, so I think that's, 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 that's a big problem, not only in Poland, but globally. I, I got a story. Is it okay if I share the story? Yes, sure. So I'm trying to think if I should mention the name of the country. So I'm, I'm not going to mention the name of the country. Okay. So I, you know, I, I travel, I travel 100 days a year and I've spoken in 34 countries. One of the countries that I went, went to, when I, when I went to the country, and I, by the way, I actually love this country. For me, this country has amazing food. This country has great people. But the first touch point, which is an important touch point for this country, is your immigration. So I landed the immigration, and I see that they have this brand new messaging. The message is, service with a smile. <laughs> and there were posters everywhere, Lucas. You, had, you, you got off the plane. Every, as, you walk, as you walked to immigration, there were posters. Even when I went to the toilet, there were posters in the toilet. <laughs> Staring right back at you. <laughs> and employees of the of this immigration also had badges with the word service with the smile. So now let me ask you, Lucas, you've seen all of this. What do you expect? Smile. A smile. <laughs> A lot of smile. <laughs> so before this, I mean, I know what immigration is like. I had no expectation. But now you have promised me that you are going to give me a smile. You're going to serve me with a smile. And I'm like, yes, I'm looking forward to this. So I queue up and I said, look around with my passport. I'm looking around. I realized nobody was smiling. They should Somebody. change the message. We would try to smile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> try to smile or we don't smile, but you know what? <laughs> you smile on our behalf. <laughs> okay. So I got, a, I got a little bit of, again, I, I'm the brand guy, right? So for me, this is like injustice. I want to, as a brand, if you put a message out there, I want you to live it. So I reach the counter where the immigration officer is there. And he wasn't smiling, but he, again, there was a poster at the back of his room and he had the badge. I hand him my passport. I waited for my smile. There was no smile. So I knocked on the glass window. He looked up. He goes, yes. And I said, um, you know, the campaign you have is the message is about service with a smile. Here's my smile. Can I have your smile? If looks could kill. <laughs> he, he looks at me like I've, like I've, I've insulted his mother. <laughs> That's when I know, okay, you know what, Mr. Brand Guy, shut up. <laughs> Zip it, take your passport. If not, you're going to be kicked out from the country. So I kept maybe, quiet. Maybe they want people to write song about them, poems. Or... I'll tell you what it is, Lucas. This story which I'm sharing is an example of multiple organizations that I visited around the world. They put up this you know, they go to their marketing team, come up with great brand messages, tell the world that we are about care, we are about responsibility, like United Airlines, by the way, you know what they have? We fly friendly, we fly right, we connect the world. So they put up these great messages to the world, and then when they cannot fulfill it, the world is going to go, wait a minute, you promised me that, I am not happy. I am now going to tell the world how you cheated me and lied to me. And that's what has happened. happened. So, I, so this, in, in this incident with the, with, with the immigration, you know, it's really it's a metaphor for multiple organizations. If you only focus on the outside and you ignore your outside, it doesn't matter what size your organization is, you will be in trouble if your people cannot deliver your brand to the world. Yes, wonderful story. Thank you, thank you for sharing uh, for sharing this. Um, so I, I have a last question um, uh, for you. Uh, in the context of uh, internal branding, uh, how companies should respond to such a global crisis or or just any crisis 
that affects brand and uh, employees. So, so firstly, I mean, for for your viewers that are they are listening in, I I feel you. You know, I'm I. It's it's happened to my own organization as well. The world is in a very challenging place. But I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pinpoint a few things that I've advised my clients to do from an internal brand perspective. There are many things that you can you should be doing from an external perspective. But let's start by looking from an internal perspective. The first thing that you need to do is to please empathize with your people. Many of them are going through change like never before. Working from home, stressed out if they're going to have a job, pay cuts. Empathy is something which is very underrated. Show your people that you care. So the first thing is please empathize with them. Have heart. Brands who have heart are so crucial today. Number two is this. Recognize them. Hey, you know, this year, oh, sorry, 2020, I keep still thinking I'm in 2020. In 2020, my goodness, my people, my team members, my consulting and my, and my training team, they work like they never worked before. And as such, I continuously recognize them over and over again. I thank them, I, 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 I write them love letters, <laughs> I, you know, because they have, they have fought for me, right? They have, they have stood for me. And, and despite all these challenges, they're there for the organization. So please recognize your people because they need to feel the love during these tiring times. So from an internal brand perspective, these are two simple things that you can do. The final thing that you can start to do is to start thinking about how you are going to communicate those messages in your organization. And that is an entire internal brand communication strategy that you need to embark on. It could be town halls, it could be um, you know, one-on-ones, it could be mentorship, and so on. There's a whole bunch of activities that you can do to just help you during this period. And I've told, I've told organizations this, don't forget your people during this time. If you ignore them and you just focus on, oh my God, we're in trouble. I need more money from customers. Let's focus all our efforts on just a customer acquisition. And you forget your people. Again, same, same, same thing as I've been preaching throughout. You, have, you will get in trouble. You got to get your people and you got to get them on board your site, specifically during this time. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I really love your energy <laughs> when you speak. <laughs> and, and I can imagine how you can move people when you have a keynote or work with the, with the companies. It's amazing. You know, when, I, then, when, I, when, I do, when I do keynotes, it's very interesting, right? So, Lucas, if, if, you, if you met me in the street, I'm probably going to be like this. I'm introverted. But you know what? Something happens to me when I get on stage. I come alive. I'm like, ooh. I make people cry, I make people laugh, I make them feel their heartbeats, and I can only do that on the stage. <laughs> Otherwise, outside, I'm like, don't. <laughs> <laughs> so as, as I said at, at, the, at the very beginning, uh, hopefully one day in Poland, we can see you on stage. Yes, bring me to Poland. <laughs> Even if it's virtual. <laughs> Just, we have to wait when this whole pandemic situation is going to, to finish and we will see what we can do. <laughs> so, um, if you would like to invite people to your, as we cannot meet now in Poland, uh, we can meet online um, on conferences and um, on the podcast, uh, but if you'd like to uh, uh, invite people to your channels, I mean, website, blog, uh, YouTube channel, or recommend your books, you can please do this right now. I think it's going sure. to be... Hey, you know what? I'm going to do this, right? Okay. What if, I, what if I give your viewers a free course? A free online course. No strings attached. We are selling this course for US $97. We launched it. We probably sold about 1,000 licenses of the course. And then with the course, we started to realize that we wanted to give back for, to organizations, to people, specifically during this challenging period. 
So we have made this course for free for our clients and our network. Free. And it's, and it's about global branding trends. So the whole course is about trends. It's about how you can think about and strategize your brand in 2021, thinking about what are the key trends you need to look at. It's a mini course, but it's powerful. I'm going to give this course to your viewers. Oh. I will send you the link in an email. Please flash it in when you are doing this. Um, they need to type the word brand guy. That's me. And they will get this course for free. It will Wonderful. be limited because I am given. I mean, people, when, when I started announcing, giving it away, we had a thousand people that paid for it, but we had nearly 3000 people that got it for free. And we are okay. I mean, this is our, our way of giving back. I will give this course to your viewers. How does that sound? Sounds great. Thank you very much. Yeah, You're wonderful. Welcome. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. And then, of course, thank you for sharing your, your, your knowledge, your energy with uh, Polish entrepreneurs who are going to watch this, marketers and um, students, because I am now at the university uh, in, in Gdańsk, this is the north coast of, um, uh, sure. uh, of Poland. Um, it was a really pleasure to have you here. Lucas, do uh, you, you have my copy of my book? Do you no, have my I, book? no, I do not have your copy, copy of your book. Do you have a digital copy? Uh, I don't remember. I don't think so. All right, I will send you. A, I will send you a digital copy. Wonderful. Thank you very much. You, I will send you a digital so, copy. So many gifts at the beginning of the year. I know, man. It's a uh, Christmas, Orthodox Christmas. It's <laughs> <is> finished. <laughs> <laughs> and now, after this podcast, you are a part of Polish branding revolution. So, hey, Poland. <laughs> so I'm, thank you. I'm come and visit. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So one more time, thank you very much, um, uh, Jerome, and thank you for all these free gifts. Um, um, uh, and hope, hope, uh, as I said, uh, we can meet uh, soon uh, in Poland. Looking okay, forward you. to it. Okay. okay, thank you very much.